It's time now for us to uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. We have in the foyer these cups that have the, the bread and the through the vine. And if you didn't get one, raise your hand and we'll have someone bring one to you. Uh, thank you. This morning, as we think about Jesus and our, our about what he's done for us, I want to reflect upon three words that describe God and his relationship to us. And I believe these three words are, are always found in his relationship with us. The first of these is love. He always responds to us in love. And love in the sense that <clears throat> and we speak of God is his active goodwill. He is acting for our good. And that's the way he always responds to us. And that's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we should not perish but have everlasting life. He did something for us that was good, good for us. The second word is mercy. Mercy carries with it the idea of relieving someone's burden. In the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 22, they had various commands about how they were to interact with others. They said, if you found someone's donkey or someone's ox burdened or in a ditch, you were to relieve that, that ox or that donkey of its burden. You were to show mercy. That's a concept that people would have mercy for, even for animals, that if they were under a burden, they would take care of them. And the third word that's, uh, that is very much associated with God and his interaction with us is the word grace. And I think grace carries with it the idea of bearing the cost for someone else, paying their cost or their price. Uh, so I want to look at these three words as, as they are involved in our forgiveness. In Matthew, the 18th chapter, Peter asked Jesus a, a question about forgiveness. And Jesus has been teaching on forgiveness, and, and Peter asked him the question, how many times shall I, my brother sin against me, shall I forgive him? And in verse 22 of the 18th chapter of Matthew, Jesus gives him the short answer. 70 times 7, we're all familiar with that. But if we continue reading there in Matthew 18, Jesus gives the detailed answer or a fuller description of what forgiveness is about. And he tells a story about a king. A king comes from, from he is away from his uh, group of people. He comes back to check on his servants and to check on their progress and their accounts that they have. One servant is found who is 10,000 talents behind on his account. That's an enormous sum. He doesn't say how the servant got in such bad financial shape, relationship to the master, why he owed the master so much, just but he is an enormous sum but behind. The, con the concept of 10,000 talents in their day would have been an amount of money that he could not have paid back in his lifetime. And that's an enormous sum that it was. The servant then had no means possible to repay this money. And the verdict was he would be sold along with his family into slavery. And then that money applied toward the debt, not pay the debt, but applied toward the debt. The servant, seeing how deplorable of position that would be, fell down on the ground and asked for time to repay the debt. He says, I will repay it all. I think we see the unrealistic anticipation of the servant that he could pay an enormous sum in his lifetime. And that's sort of like, as we're going to say, us, when we have wronged others or we've wronged God to think that we could ever pay him back. And that the servant says, I will pay it back, which was beyond his capability. 
I want us to focus on the response of the master now. So we see this servant that is in a very burdened position. He's about to be sold with his family and has no way of repaying his debt. In verse 27 of, of Matthew 18, it says, the Lord said of that, uh, <clears throat> the, the Lord looked at that slave and felt compassion. Compassion is derived from love or from active goodwill. He saw this slave was in a very burdened condition and he had compassion. He had a desire to help him. The second thing it says there is the Lord released him. He relieved him of his burden. His burden was he was going to be sold into slavery and his family sold into slavery and the Lord released him from that burden. That is mercy. The, the Lord had mercy on him. And then in the last of the verses, it says, the Lord forgave him the debt. That is grace. Now, the debt didn't go away. Somebody had to bear the cost of the debt, and the Lord bore it out of his ability out of his finances, the cost of the debt was, was born there. So Jesus is illustrating with his story here that for there to be forgiveness, there has to be an act of goodwill or love. There has to be mercy upon the person who needs the forgiveness, and there has to be grace extended by following through and relieving the debt. I'm going to now at this point jump to Ephesians, the second chapter. This is Paul writing a letter to the, the church at Ephesus. And he begins with in verse one of chapter two, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. That sounds like a fairly burdened place to be, one who is dead in their trespasses and sins. Dropping now down to verse four. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. See how Paul uses all three of those words in that, in that reconciliation of us to God. His great love for us caused him to see have mercy upon us because we're so burdened with sin, no way to get out. And then we're saved through Jesus Christ by grace. God provides Jesus Christ. That's what we're here for this morning as if we're going to partake of this supper in a few minutes. To remember that it is God's love, his mercy, and his grace that caused Jesus Christ to become the sacrifice. That's the cost that it was to God for him to extend his grace to us, for him to be a merciful and graceful God because he loved us so. Now, as we partake of these emblems this morning, let us remember that God is the one who paid the price. God is the one who loved us and the God is the one who felt compassion on us because we were destined to be condemned eternally for our sins. Now, the rest of the message there back in Matthew, the 18th chapter, I want to keep what I've just said in your minds, but the rest of the message in the Matthew, the 18th chapter, go in the account of a fellow slave who was indebted to the original slave or servant and the original slave or servant who got forgiven of his massive debt did not extend that same love, grace, and mercy to his fellow slave. And God condemned him, not for his debt, but for his ungratefulness. To me, that really puts an exclamation mark on what we're doing here this morning. We have to be individuals who now we're celebrating receiving the love, mercy, and grace of God 
in our forgiveness of our sins, we now have to become like God and extend love, mercy, and grace to those around us or we will be guilty before God like that servant was. So let's keep, and that's why we remind ourselves each week, is to remind ourselves each week, our goal is to become like God in love, mercy, and grace as we extend it to each other. So let's let's keep those in mind. We're going now to partake of the, the two emblems of the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> the bread, which is... Uh, Reminds us of his giving his body and sacrifice. So let's offer thanks now. And dear holy God and Father, we bow before you. We want to give thanks to you for your graciousness to us, for your love, mercy, and grace. Be with us now as we partake of this uh, bread. That we remember Jesus Christ is the price that was paid for us. In his name we do pray, amen.